my name's Chad, and I bought a Fixer Upper. You might wonder why I'm wearing this mask. Because I am doing demolition. Trying to finish the plaster and lath on the first floor. <laughs> It's a mess. I seem to have gotten a little dust on my arm. <laughs> hey, so, yeah, I'm quite a mess. I need a shower. But doing demolition on plaster and lath is messy work. And I know I haven't done a lot of videos, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I thought maybe some videos of the demolition would be cool, but my camera doesn't. It just doesn't capture the uh, immensity of having a wave of black and white and gray dust just come at your face. So um, <laughs> maybe someday uh, we'll find another fixer up or get better camera equipment and do that for you. But for now, you get to see the aftermath as I do it. Pretty proud. Um, it's only taken me a couple hours, all told, to get all this um, to get all this off the ceiling which was up here, pardon my camera work, my lighting, and down here onto the floor. Uh, even though it's been stretched out over a couple days, I can only do it for so long before it uh, kind of wears me out. <clears throat> um, plus the rest of life is going on, so, you know, we try to get to it when we can. Uh, but I wanted to talk a little bit about why I'm taking out the plaster and the lath, because some people really like it. They think it's a hallmark of of a century home they, they think it's worth keeping they think it's worth repairing and you know I'm not gonna gain say how anyone else handles their own house uh, personally I'm not interested in building a museum or a Ren fair or any other sort of historical reenactment um, instead I'm interested in making the house as safe and energy efficient and comfortable as I can um, and trying to keep the stylistic details uh, period accurate so the problem with plaster and lath and with the original 19th century approach to insulation and wind management and water management is that it's really permeable to air and it's really not easy or cheap to heat or cool. Uh, <clears throat> so at least based on what I've read and what I've watched and what I've learned talking to other people, really the two easiest ways to keep your house manageable in terms of um, comfort level and uh, and affordable in terms of your heating or cooling bill is to uh, first <clears throat> make the building envelope as airtight as you can. And when I say the envelope, I mean the outer layer or perhaps inner in my case, but a layer near the edge of the house <clears throat> that can stop air from moving because once you've heated or cooled air the easiest way to pay to do it again is to lose the air you've already heated or cooled so these buildings are really leaky and they're really permeable they've got a lot of holes all over in them and it makes them very expensive to heat or cool you know when gas is cheap or when coal is cheap or when electricity is cheap it's not a problem but uh, i think we all see days coming where it's not cheap and it's not going to be cheap but it's never going to be cheap again so there's one thing i want to do either for myself if i wind up living here or for the next owner is to make the home affordable to to heat or cool which means i have to seal the building envelope as best i can which means i need to remove the plaster and lath which is in the way so that i can get to the outer <clears throat> the outer building envelope and um and lock it down the second reason um, or the second thing that uh, that um, that makes a building economical to to live in and comfortable to live in is insulation. And this building has a little bit of blown in on the outer perimeter, but it's low R value and it's pretty sh trash shape. So it's my goal to remove it and replace it with something with a better R value. And before I do put insulation in, uh, the building also has abominable electric work like i am shocked it has not burnt to the ground yet um t wires tucked between boards um you know wire knots just tape um not augered through the right 
spots, not run the right ways, uh, being held up against wood. It's a really, really terrible electric job and the electric outlets are not to code. And I think there's even still some features in the house that are on the knob and tube. So I wanted to update the electric work. I want to make it uh, to code as close as I can possibly get. And that means also exposing the studs, which means taking down the plaster and lath. So that's my reason for taking all this historical content down. I, if you want some of the dust, you can come get it. Um, otherwise, it's going to landfill. But um, yeah, that's, that's why I'm doing that. It's taking me a while. Um, it's not quick work. I'm, I'm also not really dedicating a lot of time to it, so uh, it's, it's not going to be quick. But as long as we keep moving forward, that's the trick, right? So I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm going to keep, uh, keep chugging along. The next thing to do is come in here and, and maybe drag out some of the lath, but then shovel up the plaster and take it to the dump. And that's a lot of fun. So that'll probably be a couple hours worth, a couple run, a couple dump runs worth. And um, yeah, it should be good. Anyway, uh, stay tuned. Um, don't really have a lot of other stuff planned and uh at some point we'll go over the windows because i need to need to think about what i'm going to do about the windows but yeah it should be good i got definitely got several days or weeks worth of work in front of me just managing the mess i made so anyway thanks for watching bye